If I were looking for a virtual assistant right now, I would use the free version first, see what I found, and then move on to the paid versions. And there's a reason for that, and I'll share that with you as I share the other two options for you. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds, it's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide, your host. Justin Harris. Welcome back to the most listened to appraisal related podcast in the world. The podcast with over 500 episodes, almost a million, I'm not kidding folks, a million downloads. This is the Appraiser Coach Podcast. I'm your host, Dustin Harris. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about virtual assistants. I get uh, questions frequently about virtual assistants. I guess I've had a little bit of experience with individuals across the pond, if you will. And I want to share with you some of the most common questions, or the most common question that I get. And that is, how do you find them, Dustin? How do you find a virtual assistant? Well, I'm going to answer that question for you. But first, I want to pause and remind you that we are sponsored by, well, three fabulous, wonderful companies that are allowing you, helping you to be more efficient, more successful, a better real estate appraiser. Number one is Working RE Magazine. Folks, if you're not going to Working RE on a regular basis, it doesn't have to be daily, but I would say weekly. There are some articles on there, folks, that you are, trust me, missing out on. Check them out. Go to workingre.com, workingre.com, data master, saving appraisers lots of time. <laughs> let's, just, let's just boil it down, making you more efficient, making you more successful. That's data master. You can find them at datamasterusa.com, datamasterusa.com. Finally, sponsored by Alamode Software. Alamode, of course, is the software that I've been using for, golly gee, over two decades. Check them out, go to alamode.com, or you can reach them by picking up the old-fashioned phone, the rotary dial, and uh, calling them at 800 Alamode. All right, folks, here we are, well over 500 episodes in. I have referred to virtual assistants frequently throughout my podcast, and it's because... I have uh, done it the wrong way, and I have learned from my mistakes. I was counting up the other day, and I lost count at over 20. I think I probably have hired over the years somewhere between 20 and 30 uh, virtual assistants or VAs. And by the way, I will use those terms uh, interchangeably today. VA just stands uh, not for the Veterans Administration, but for a virtual assistant. By the way, I have to tell you a little funny. My young son the other day said, hey, Dad, did you know that we have three veterinarians in our neighborhood? And I thought, wow, I didn't know we even had one. And then he thought for a second, he goes, wait a second, I mean veterans. <laughs> so we're going to be talking about VAs today, not in the term of veterans, but in the term of a virtual assistant, meaning somebody who does not work next to you. VA can refer to anybody that is virtually, and of course, with the pandemic, we've got many people working from home. My entire team is now working from home. I've got now a team of about a dozen to 15 people working at Appraisal Precision and doing a family job. Man, we got a great team. It's just amazing. Over the years, I've had some real struggles, had some drama, had some challenges. Uh, I don't have that currently. It's so wonderful to work with such a great great group of people. But they're all working virtually. So essentially, they're all VAs. But in this in this episode, we're going to be talking about international VAs, not located in the US, though I've got people that work for me in New York. I've got, I've got people all over the US. And I also have people that work outside the US. You know, for example, currently, I have one individual working for me in India. And I have one, two, three, four individuals, so three for purpose of this podcast, because I've got three VAs that work for me in the Philippines. And then I have another one that works for me in the Philippines, but she actually works in a different capacity, a different business. So not, not on the appraiser side. So for purpose of this podcast, I currently have four VAs, four virtual assistants working for me. And they are each fabulous. They are each talented. They are each wonderful in their own way. But folks, it was not easy to find these people. And this is not an easy thing. 
And I think that's probably one of the biggest reasons people are dissuaded. I think it's for two reasons. Number one, ignorance. And that's not a bad word. That just means you don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And so people, they may be aware of VAs. They may be aware of this uh, this term virtual assistants. They may even know a little bit about it, or they might know somebody who has a virtual assistant, but they don't necessarily know, number one, how do you go about it? Number two, how do you train somebody that's 8,000 miles away. How do you how do you do what what we do with someone who is you'll you'll probably never meet in this in this lifetime, which is sad. One of the VAs that I have, her name is Giselle. She has worked for me for almost 4 years. I feel like she is every bit a part of the team as anybody else. She is fabulous, she is talented, she is wonderful. I love her to death and I've never met her in person. I probably never will. Well, I hope so. Someday I'd love to travel to the Philippines. I would love to meet some of these individuals that have been such an integral part of my great team. Folks, I'm telling you, let me just state something that is going to sound a little strange as it comes out of my mouth, but I think you'll understand what I'm getting at when I say these are real people with real lives, many of them with spouses and children and siblings and parents and other hobbies and things that they're involved in. Folks, I tell you that because I see so often that sometimes, and I don't think it's on purpose. I certainly don't think it's on purpose, but I see sometimes, not appraisers so much, but but small business owners working with individuals outside their culture, outside their race, outside their nationality. And sometimes there is this, this strange relationship there because we don't know them and we've never met them, but yet we work with them on a daily basis. Folks, these are amazing people. Granted, that is a broad brush. I've dealt with some real bummers. I've (laughs) dealt with some real issues and some that bring drama and some that just don't have what I thought bringing it to the table. So the bottom line is I have worked with virtual assistants now, oh golly, probably eight to nine years. I first was introduced to virtual assistants through a book called The 4-Hour Work Week. It's a Tim Ferriss book. It's the book that Tim Ferriss really put Tim Ferriss on the map. And I was opened up to this idea that I don't have to be so closed-minded about the individuals that I work with, that you can open up your possibilities, open up your eyes and see that there are people all over this world that have amazing talents, amazing education, amazing experience, amazing loyalty and willingness to do a good job. And I will be honest, folks, I, I mentioned in the beginning, I'm going to, I'm going to probably reiterate it throughout the podcast today. I did it wrong so many times. I remember reaching out to my good friend, uh, Roy Meyer in the very beginning and Roy bless his heart's been doing VAs longer than I have. And I knew that by the way, Roy wrote a great book. Um, uh, you can find it on Amazon and it's, and it's all about this. The book is about virtual assistants and specifically about virtual assistants with appraisers. Sorry, Roy, I can't remember the name of your book right now, but I'm sure you can find it. Just go to Amazon, type in Roy Meyer virtual assistants or VA. I'm sure you can find it. And that's kind of where I went for reference. I had actually hired one or two VAs once I read his uh, very short book, but I reached out to Roy and he gave me some great advice in the beginning. One of the uh, pieces of advice I remember him giving me is Dustin, don't hire part time. Now, folks, trust me when I say I was not in a position position financially to hire anybody at the time. It appealed to me that I could hire somebody outside the U.S. and not have to hire at the same rate that uh, those in the U.S. are used to. Um, and so that appealed to me, but I still, I, I still was a cheapskate. I still said, you know what, Roy, that's great, buddy. Love you, but I'm going to do this differently. I'm going to hire somebody part-time. I'm going to see if they work out and blah, blah, blah. Well, here's, here's the deal, folks. Roy, you were right. <laughs> I, made, I made some big mistakes, and that was one of them. Uh, trying to hire somebody part-time is a challenge, and I'll tell you why. Because most individuals, my experience has been, most individuals looking for work, looking to work for a, an American company, by the way, that is a prestigious thing, especially in the Philippines, to be able to work for an American company. It is kind of a, a thing that you're going to brag about, I think, at the parties. Most people are looking for a full-time gig. And if you don't give them full-time, they will find work elsewhere. And if they like that work more than they like your work, or if they are treated better, or that individual, that other boss, if you will, needs them for more time than they thought in the beginning, guess what? 
they sometimes go bye-bye. And sometimes uh, their culture is not one to say goodbye. Sometimes they just don't show up and you have no idea where they've gone. And you can't go knock on their door and say, hey, what gives? Where you been? They will just disappear off the, place of the, uh, off the uh, face of the planet. You will not hear from them again. It happened to me at least three times. I'm sorry, Roy. You were right. I was wrong. One of the things is you're looking to hire somebody full time. That means 40 hours a week. Oh, well, Dustin, I don't have 40 hours worth of work to do. Okay, that's fine. Pay them for 40 hours and build up to it. Trust me, folks, when I say hire full time. That's one of the mistakes I've made. I made plenty of mistakes over the years. Some things that just because of time won't share here, but in a personal coaching call, I might share uh, more with you. Uh, I will tell you about a product at the end of today's episode that will uh, go into some of those stories as well. Some of the the ruts that I found myself in, some of the trying to reinvent the wheel. If I had just listened to those that were smarter than myself, I didn't have to necessarily go through that myself. But folks, I can tell you that I feel very confident now these days that I know what to look for. I know how to filter, if you know what I mean. If you've gone through my webinar about how to hire, you know what filters look like. These are ways for you to take that mass group of people that are going to apply and you're going to get the same thing in the Philippines or India or anywhere else that you might go outside the U.S. You will get a great number of resumes, a great number of inquiry, a great number of people looking for work. And it's up to you to filter down to the cream of the crop. It's up to you to filter down to the one that you truly want to work on or work with rather. And there are some great ways to do that. There are some wonderful ways to work through the process and make sure that you find individuals that will benefit you and your company. Okay, let's put that aside for just a second. Let's talk through this question about where to find or how to find an individual to work for you in an appraisal office. I'm going to share with you three resources after the break. Before the break, I want to share with you a couple of ideas and a couple thoughts to think through. Okay. If you are familiar with companies like Indeed, you will know how the hiring process works online. If you've ever worked with LinkedIn to find and to put resumes out, you will kind of have an idea how this works. If you've never worked with either one of those companies, I don't think it's a far stretch to know that you kind of already get it, right? You have individuals out there that are looking for work and you have yourself that is looking to find work. And you need to find a way to connect with these individuals. Now, there are many ways to do that. And and again, I'm going to talk to you about three ways, but please understand that the ways that I'm talking about today are not, I repeat, not the only ways to find people. There are as many ways to find people probably as there are people to be found. And I would encourage you to be creative. I would encourage you to look for opportunities that maybe others have not looked for because you tend to get a saturated market when you go through the same old stale processes. All right. There is a way to go about this. There's a way to interview. There's a way to filter, as we talked about. There's a way to set up. You know, you've got questions regarding uh, contracts. Should you do a contract? What about taxes? How do you pay them? How do they get the money? How do you do this legally? All of these questions are answered in the product that I'll talk about. It's a webinar that I'll talk about here in a few minutes. But I first want to pause here, remind you that we are sponsored by three great companies, one of them being Working RE Magazine. Working RE, folks, stands for Working Real Estate. And they kind of have a twofold interest out there. They are not a real estate agent magazine. They are a magazine that caters to both appraisers and home inspectors. But I can tell you, if you take their physical magazine, about 75% of that content is going to be dedicated to, yes, you. The real estate appraiser. Folks, if you want to know what's going on, you should be on Working RE's list, not just their digital list, which I've talked about here before, but their physical list. Make sure that you are receiving every quarter the Working RE magazine delivered to your home that you can physically read. I love taking Working RE with me on the plane whenever I travel. It's a great, great way to spend my time while I'm traveling and just get caught up in what's going on in my selected career, which of course is real estate appraisal. Check them out by going to their website, www. You don't have to say www anymore, do you? Let's just start with this. You can find them by going to workingre.com. Again, it's workingre.com. Speaking of URLs and those that you want to follow, how about datamasterusa.com? Datamasterusa.com is about saving time and making appraisers more successful. How, Dustin? Well, 
All that data entry work that you're either doing yourself or you're having a VA do for you, you can save time, you can save money, you can increase the quality of your work because you're not going to have human error by transferring it directly into your report by using Data Master. Data Master can be found again at datamasterusa.com. Once again, it's datamasterusa.com. And finally, we're sponsored by the company, the company that I've been using for my appraisal work for years and years and years. It is a la mode. It is total software. It is mobile. It is all the tools that you could ever imagine and need for your appraisal work. Folks, I could not imagine, could not imagine any other company coming to me with this much to offer. It is well worth There's a reason, folks, they're number one. They are number one in form-filling software for residential appraisers, and you should be utilizing them as well. Alamode.com is where you find them. Better yet, pick up the phone, call them. 800 Alamode. Again, it's 800 Alamode. All right. Welcome back to the program. Dustin Harris hanging out with you and talking about virtual assistance and the number one question on the table. This is a question I get frequently. From my peeps, they want to know, how do you find them, Dustin? You've gone through 25 virtual assistants. You have four of them working for you now. How do you find them? I want the best. I want to work with the best. I want to do it right. I don't want to reinvent the wheel. I certainly don't want to make all the mistakes you made, Dustin. Well, you know, that's that's wise advice. Let me share with you a couple of ideas, okay? Two of them will cost money, and one of them will be free other than your time. I will give you the punchline right now. If I were looking for another VA, in fact, my most recent search for a VA started here, I would recommend the free version, okay? In fact, maybe I'll just give that to you first. I won't hold that to the end. We'll have dessert first. If I were looking for a virtual assistant right now, I would use the free version first, see what I found, and then move on to the paid versions. And there's a reason for that, and I'll share that with you as I share the other two options for you. I'm not trying to take away from any one of these companies. They're not sponsors here. I don't have anything against these companies, but I will be very honest with my reviews and what experience I have had with these individuals, okay, or this these individual companies. But let's start with the free version. The free version, my friends, is called Facebook. Facebook has the ability to reach out and find people. What what are you talking about, Dustin? I didn't know you could do jobs on... Yes, you can. It's through Facebook groups. Now, if you're not familiar with Facebook groups, if you're just familiar with your own personal profile and connecting with friends from high school and gossiping about, you know, uh, Uncle John that lives down the road... That is one one section of Facebook. But of course, Facebook has groups. Uh, I find that to be one of the most beneficial parts of Facebook for me, rather than get in the back and forth with the religious and the political debates that I often see on Facebook. I love going just to my groups. I have groups for the community, the local community that I belong to, so that I know what's going on in my local community, that I can keep up with the trends for real estate. I host groups. I have a, a group that has real estate agents in it that I often give information out into. I belong to many other groups for buying and selling classified ads. I run some groups online for appraisers, one of them being private through my all-star team. The other one is very open. It's called the Appraiser Classifieds Group. Start there. If you're looking to buy, sell, or get help wanted, or put yourself out as someone looking for a job, that's a great place to go. It's called the Appraiser Classifieds. Appraiser Classifieds. It's a group that's open. You can join. You have to reach out to me so I can make sure you're legit, but jump in there and be a part of the buying and selling distos and buying and selling the file cabinets and help wanted and trainees looking for mentors and mentors looking for trainees. It's a great group to belong to. But there are other groups out there for help wanted. There's other groups out there for specifically virtual assistants. And basically the way these things work is you've got, uh, let's say, let's make it simple. Let's say you've got an individual that's located in the Philippines that is looking for a job. And let's say you, uh, sitting in Missouri, uh, are looking for a virtual assistant. Both of you join this group and you connect Someone might put out that they are looking for work. You might put out that you're looking for a virtual assistant. I will warn you. You will get inundated with messages. You will get inundated with friend requests. Just a helpful hint. I never accept friend requests. I just, you know, for those that I'm interested in, I reach out to them. Let me give you another helpful hint on a filter. 
Okay, I specifically say, please do not apply unless you have had appraisal experience, real estate appraisal experience. Okay, And 99 out of 100 people will apply despite that. But that's one of my filters, right? Or it could be. Sometimes I'm not necessarily looking for someone with real estate appraisal experience, but that has helped narrow the field in the past. But set up filters. Set up ways that you know they actually read the ad and they're not just reading the first line, which is looking for a virtual assistant for an appraisal office. And they will apply, 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 apply. And then it's up to you to filter through those? No. Let them filter through themselves so that you know exactly who is looking and what they are looking for. I'm going to give you the name of one, two, three, four, five different groups that I currently belong to that you are welcome to join if you are on Facebook. Uh, If you have a pen and paper ready, I will give these to you. And frankly, let's just, if you're driving, don't worry about pulling over. You can just go home. You can get on on Facebook. You can type in real estate. You can type in virtual assistant. You can type in VA jobs. Those types of, that's how I found these. Uh, There's probably others. I'm sure there are others. These are the five that I use most frequently. Ready? Number one, virtual assistant hiring dash home-based jobs, job tools. Virtual assistant hiring dash home-based job tools. Okay, that's number one. Number two, virtual assistant. That's it. Parentheses, VA, unparentheses. Virtual assistant, VA. Next one, home-based jobs, PH. PH stands for Philippines. Home-based jobs, PH. We've got real estate professionals. And then final, finally, REVA, R-E-V-A, which stands for real estate virtual assistants. Real estate virtual assistants. Now, those are mostly for agents, I will tell you that, but you might be able to find somebody and hook up with somebody that has a little bit of appraisal experience, okay? So those are the groups. That's number one, is going to Facebook and finding groups. Now, you could do the same thing most likely with LinkedIn, with Twitter, with, I don't know, Instagram. I don't know. I've never used Instagram. I have no no clue. But I'm assuming there's other ways to connect on social media with these individuals. But that is one of three ways that I'm going to share with you today on how to find a virtual assistant. It is by joining group or groups on Facebook and putting out an ad or simply scrolling through the posts that are already there and possibly finding the individual that you want to reach out to. Now, there are the the right ways and the wrong ways to reach out to them. Again, this is something that I go over in my webinar that I'll share with you in just a little bit. By the way, it's a free webinar. So so don't think this is an upsell Uh, I'm going to share with you an opportunity to get a free webinar on how to hire a virtual assistant. It's probably one of the most listened to and watched webinars on my website. Number two. Number two is uh, a company called Virtual Staff Finder. Okay, now it was written by a guy that, uh, or created by a guy rather, that wrote a book years ago called Virtual Freedom, I believe. And uh, the idea behind the book is utilizing virtual assistants to help you in your business. Okay. And he created a way to connect Americans with uh, those overseas, mostly in the Philippines. By the way, just as a side note, why do you talk so much about the Philippines, Dustin? This is a big world. But folks, I have worked with individuals from Bangladesh, from South America. I've worked with individuals multiple times in India, uh, Croatia. Where else? Mongolia. Currently working with somebody in Mongolia. And uh, I can tell you that by far, my experience has always been better Not the best, not perfect, and there are exceptions, but best experience has been found in the Philippines. I find they have a different attitude when it comes to Americans. They're very proud to work for Americans. They're very loyal. They're very smart. They speak English from the time they are in kindergarten. If they, I don't think they call it kindergarten there, but from the time they first start school, they learn English side by side with their native language, and they're amazing. They, are, they truly are amazing for the most part. I've had great experience. So that's that. So Virtual Staff Finder is basically a service that claims to do all the footwork for you. What does that mean? That means that for $500-ish, I mean, it's like $495, maybe the, the price has gone up. I don't know. For about $500, you give them the criteria. You spend about 45 minutes to an hour filling out their application process. What are you looking for? What are you looking to pay? What kind of experience are you looking for? What type of worker are you looking for full-time, part-time? All of this information is going to be asked of you. You put together the job description, if you will, and then you hand it over to them. Their professionals will reach out to their network and they will give you three potential opportunities or three potential employees. 
three potential VAs. They'll say, here are the three, here are their phone numbers, here are their Skype IDs, here's their emails, reach out to them and go from there. Now, Dustin, what if you go through the three and you don't like any of them? Or what if you go through the three, you hire one and uh, he or she doesn't work out long term? Well, the answer to that is you can go back. I think it's within three months. You can go back to Virtual Staff Finder and say, hey, listen, these three did not work out. Give me three more. And they will. They will give you, they will go through the process again. It takes about a week and a half to two weeks. You'll get three more that you have an opportunity to interview, to get to know, to try out. And Dustin, what if those don't work out? So you've gone through six people and you don't like them. Will they give you three more? No, they won't. What they will do is say, we would like you to sign up for another service. We already gave you six. You're too picky, my friend. Sign up for a service again, and we'll go through the process again, and we'll give you three different ones. And then if those don't work out, we'll give you three additional. And at that point, you've gone through 12 people, okay? Folks, let me tell you, this sounds like a great idea. I was very, very, very high on the idea of having someone else do all the footwork because last time I did it myself, I literally spent 40 to 50 of my own hours trying to find the right person and it didn't work out for me. It was frustrating. And I thought, you know what? Forget it. I talk all the time about delegation. I talk all the time about giving work to someone else that you are not uh, designed to do. Let me focus on appraisals. Let me focus on coaching. Let's let someone else find my VA. And folks, I have to be honest with you. I've had many of my mastermind students go through this process. I've had many of my all-star team go through this process. And I have yet, other than I can think of one exception, hi, Cindy, (laughs) I can think of one exception where one of my mastermind students did not have a positive experience with Virtual Staff Finder. I've now used them three times, and I've yet to have a positive experience with them. And that's just the honest truth. In fact, I had one of the recruiters contact me and uh, she didn't use these terms, but she basically said, Dustin, you're too picky. We don't, we don't usually cater to all that you're looking for. It's no wonder you're not happy. You know, we've gone through six individuals here. You're just too picky. Well, that comes from experience. That comes from, I know what I'm looking for. That comes from 25 people that I've hired over the past and I know what to look for and what not. And I'm sorry, but the six people that you gave me have some big red flags for me. But for most people, this works just fine. I don't want to disparage Virtual Staff Finder. I'm sure that they are great and they have been great for many, many, many appraisers. Okay. But that is step number two or, or, or option number two. And finally, I'm going to give you option number three. It is the one that I've used most often over the years. So the other two, Facebook, Virtual Staff Finder, I've used periodically, but for the most part, I have used a service based in Utah. Kid out of Utah, spent some time in the Philippines, and, and then came back to the States and basically set up a... If you're familiar with Indeed, it's basically Indeed for virtual assistants in the Philippines. It's called onlinejobs.ph. Again, PH stands for Philippines, onlinejobs.ph, and it is a paid service. You can do two different things. You can do something similar to Virtual Staff Finder where you pay, I think, again, about 500 bucks and they'll find someone for you. I don't see that that being any different than Virtual Staff Finder, frankly. Uh, I've not used that service, full disclosure, uh, at least through online jobs, but it is out there. It is available. I would assume I'd have the same, I was going to say luck, but the same lack of luck through utilizing that service as I did through Virtual Staff Finder. Who knows? But, but the other process is for you to do some keyword searches, is for you to find people that are looking for jobs, And, and here's the key, you have an opportunity to put a job posting and you can be very specific and you can narrow it down. And it really is a nice system. They have background checks. uh, They have assessments that these individuals have taken. You can listen to samples of their voice. By the way, that's a very important thing is making sure that they have not just good, but exceptional English skills. And you have an opportunity to go through the process of of, uh, finding individuals who are looking for jobs through this process. Now, it is time consuming. Uh, It is not cheap. It's about $70 uh, per month. There is a cheaper version, which I would not recommend that you use. The $70-ish, and it could be, you know, again, it could have changed. I haven't checked recently. Uh, But as you go through this process, I I would shoot for the, not the cheapest, but the next level up because it just gives you a few more tools that will help you to be able to narrow those uh, that field. And it's a monthly contract. So my suggestion is you sign up, you set an alarm on your phone to come up in 29 days to say, hey, 
do you want to cancel onlinejobs.ph so that you're reminded that you don't want to get a charge on your credit card every single month. Most likely, you'll be able to find the person you need, depending on how much time and effort you put into it in the first month. You might want to go two or three months, but I mean, when you think about it, even three months is way less expensive than uh, some place like Virtual Staff Finder, although you need to do a lot more of the work. So there is that trade-off. Well, there you go, folks. Those are the three ways that I would recommend that you find virtual assistants. Number one, Facebook. That's my recommended. Start there. Number two, Virtual Staff Finder. They do the work. It's 500 bucks. Number three, onlinejobs.ph. You can also do the they work. It's 500 bucks. Or you do the work. It's 70 bucks. Folks, go to my website, theappraisercoach.com, click on products, scroll down until you find a webinar called Virtual Assistance. The subtitle is Hiring, Training, and Managing a Virtual Assistant slash VA. Folks, I'm telling you, this is pack full of great information. At one point in the webinar, I actually reach out to my virtual assistant, uh, Giselle, and you hear her voice and we talk about a couple of things. Uh, and we will go through some very specific do's and don'ts when it comes to hiring virtual assistants. I told you it was free. It is free because any member of my all-star team gets any of these webinars absolutely for free. And you can join the all-star team right now for free. Just go to the memberships, click on the all-star team at checkout, use a coupon code. And the coupon code is free 30 all-star free 30 all-star and you'll get it for free. And you can watch as many webinars as you want in the first 30 days. This is a great one to start with. Virtual Assistance is the name of the webinar. Folks, thank you for allowing me to be a small part of your success. I really, really appreciate being in your ears each and every week. Thank you so much for joining, and we will talk to you soon. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach Podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value. Folks. I've been teasing it all episode. Here it goes. Go to my website, theappraisercoach.com slash products. Scroll down. You will see an episode. Sorry, editor. Scroll down. You will see one more time. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, let's start again. Um, at checkout, use a coupon code. A coupon. At checkout, use a coupon code.